Are you looking to build muscle and improve your fitness? Have you heard about myostatin inhibitors? These drugs are designed to block the activity of myostatin, a protein that limits muscle growth and development. In this video, we'll deep dive into the effects of myostatin inhibitors and why it's important to approach them with caution. Hello, science lovers, and welcome to EQ Science, a channel dedicated to everything science, engineering, and technology. Today, we are exploring the effects of myostatin and its potential inhibition. Myostatin is a protein that has gained a lot of attention in recent years for its role in muscle growth and development. In this video, we will be discussing what myostatin is, how it works, and the potential benefits and side effects of inhibiting myostatin. Myostatin is an endogenous protein that is produced by skeletal muscle cells and acts as a negative regulator of muscle growth. In other words, myostatin is produced within the body and inhibits muscle growth and development. Myostatin does this by binding to receptors on muscle cells and signaling them to stop growing. This makes myostatin sound like a bad thing. You want to build more muscle, right? Well, myostatin is produced by many different mammalian and avian species, which indicates that the ability to produce myostatin was positively selected for. This is likely because both muscle building and maintenance are biologically expensive processes that require large amounts of energy. Excessive muscle mass could also be a hindrance to survival in nature, as it would affect your speed and stamina, and increase the required energy for movement. But what if you don't want to be limited by myostatin? Bodybuilders all over the world are already taking anabolic steroids and SARMs, so myostatin inhibition doesn't seem like a far-fetched idea. Studies have shown that when myostatin is blocked, muscle growth and development can be significantly increased. In fact, animals that have been genetically engineered to lack myostatin have been shown to have significantly more muscle mass than their wild-type counterparts. So, what does this mean for humans? Well, there is evidence to suggest that blocking myostatin can be an effective way to increase muscle mass and strength in humans. In fact, there are already drugs on the market that are designed to block myostatin, such as MYO029 and ACE031. However, it should be noted that these drugs are not meant to help increase muscle mass, but rather treat diseases such as Duchenne muscular dystrophy. MYO29 is a monoclonal antibody, which means it is an antibody created from a cell lineage obtained by cloning the particular white blood cell producing it. MYO029 specifically targets myostatin and prevents it from binding to its receptors on muscle cells. By blocking the activity of myostatin, MYO029 is thought to increase muscle growth and strength. On the other hand, we have ACE031, which is a chimeric protein, meaning that two or more genes that originally coded for separate proteins were fused together to make it. ACE031 was partially made from active in receptor type 2B, or ACT-R2B, which is one of the receptors that myostatin binds to in order to inhibit muscle growth. ACE031 works by binding to myostatin and preventing it from binding to ACT-R2B. ACE031 is thus mimicking myostatin's endogenous binding partner, therefore competing for its binding affinity. Both MYO029 and ACE031 have been studied in preclinical and clinical trials. In these studies, both drugs have been shown to increase muscle mass and strength in animals and humans. It is worth noting that MYO029 has not been approved for clinical use by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and is not available for purchase. ACE031 has been through some clinical trials, and in a recent one, ACE031 resulted in a trend towards improved muscle function. The peptide improved lean body mass and bone density while reducing fat mass. However, it is important to note that the trial was concluded early due to potential safety concerns of epistaxis, which are nosebleeds, and telangiectaceous, also known as spider veins. Other anti-myostatin drugs have been made in recent years, such as ACE-083 and GYM-329. In a recent clinical trial, 
ACE083 resulted in a 15% increase in the volume of the muscles that were injected with the drug. GYM329 has only now started its first clinical trials, but has shown promising results by increasing muscle mass in monkeys. However, there are potential side effects associated with these drugs, including an increased risk of muscle injuries and insulin resistance. We can also speculate that inhibition of myostatin could cause heart problems, as the heart is primarily made up of muscle tissue. If you're interested in using myostatin inhibitors to increase muscle mass and strength, we highly recommend you speak with a doctor who can help you to understand the potential risks and benefits of these drugs. It's important to understand that blocking myostatin can have unintended consequences, as we might not fully understand the mechanisms of myostatin and its effect on our health. There are plenty of other ways to increasing your muscle mass and strength that does not involve taking drugs. Eating a healthy diet, getting enough rest, and engaging in regular strength training are all effective ways to build muscle and improve your health. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.